Hive is a high-performance and lightweight NoSQL database where the data is stored within a database locally on your device as key value pairs. By default, if you close your Flutter app, then the state of your Flutter app is not persisted and therefore we need to have a database storage to also persist our data locally on our device. And therefore we use the database Hive, which is supported on all platforms, Android, iOS, desktop and also web. Specifically for Flutter Web, it uses the IndexedDB within your browser to store your data. If you're new here, subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. Let's use Hive by following four simple steps. First of all, we will set up Hive. Secondly, we transform our model classes that we want to persist locally on our device to Hive models. Thirdly, we will look how we can use crude operations with Hive, so we will create, read, update and also delete our data. And lastly, we want to make our UI listening to the Hive storage and any changes to rebuild our widgets. Let's get started by setting up Hive, therefore you go to your pubspec jaml file and here under your dependencies you need to add these those packages Hive and Hive Flutter. And secondly you need to go to your dev dependencies and here you need to include also two packages build runner and Hive generator. After this we need to go to our main file and here inside we need to import two things, first of all Hive and also Hive Flutter. And then you need to go to your main message and here inside before you call this run app you need to include also this hive init flutter and this will initialize then hive. And before you call this you also need to put here this mandatory insight. And now we have completed our setup with hive and the next thing is to transform our model class that we want to persist locally to a hive model. Therefore you need to create first of all a model class which you want to persist. So in my case I want to persist a transaction. And this transaction is basically an expense or an income and we also can then later define the amount of this transaction. For each model class that you want to store and load within your Hive database storage you need to follow three simple steps. First of all we need to modify our model class. Secondly, we need to generate based on our model class a model class adapter. And thirdly, we need to register this model class adapter within our Hive system. Let's start with the first step to modify our model class and therefore you need to import here first of all Hive. And secondly, you need to write here part and inside of it you need to put here then this file. So here in my case transaction, so make sure that it matches here your file name. And like you can see it has also an extension of Dart and this G stands for generated. So this is later the model class adapter which we want to generate. Next you need to annotate your model class with a Hive type. And inside you need to supply a type ID which needs to be a unique number between all of your model classes. And this means if you create here another model class, for example here this user model class, then this number cannot be here the same number. So instead you need to choose here another number, for example you choose here one or two, whatever you like. Then you also need to annotate all fields within your model class that you want to persist in your Hive database. Therefore you create every time a Hive field annotation whereas each field needs to have a unique number and this number needs to be unique only within this specific model class here of our transaction. And lastly, optionally, you can also extend your model class from a Hive object. And if we extend our model class from the Hive object, then we have here some convenient methods which we can use on this object. And this means we can call these methods to persist our object to the local storage or we can also delete our object from the local storage. With this, we have completed the first step to modify our model class and the second step is to generate our model class adapter, therefore you need to go inside of your terminal and here you need to be inside of the root folder of your Flutter project and then you need to run here this command build runner build and press enter. And after some seconds it should say that it has here succeeded with some outputs and now you can go back here to your IDE and then you should see this transaction generated Dart file. And this is basically our transaction adapter which was generated based on our transaction model class. 
And now we can go over to the third step to also register this transaction adapter. Therefore you need to go to your main file. And here after in it flutter you put then this hive register adapter inside. And inside of it you need to pass then this transaction adapter which was generated. Now we can continue with step 3 to implement hive crude operations, create, read, update and delete. Therefore let's have a look at boxes and boxes are the place where our data is stored in Hive with some key value stores. So you could think of a box as a map where you have a key and a value and the box doesn't have any schema so you can place there any objects as values inside even if you have objects of different types. And everything can be placed in the same box. You also can create other boxes and then you can also place there your key values inside and how this works internally is that for each of the boxes a different file is created locally on your file storage. Before you can use a box you need to open a box and therefore we go here to our main file and we want to open here then our box directly after we have registered our transaction adapter and now we want to open our box of a transaction. And then you can define here the name of your box, so for example transactions and this is then the box where we want to store all of our transactions inside. And the statement is then loading all of our key value pairs from the local storage into our memory so that we have immediate access. And secondly next to opening a box you can also close a box and this is what we want to do here within our transaction page. So I have created here already a page with some UI. And basically here within your state you have then this dispose method and here inside you can then call hive close which will then free up all of the opened boxes and this means that all loaded key value pairs within your memory are again released. So this statement is basically closing all of our boxes however sometimes you only want to close one box and therefore you can simply call here hive box and then you put here the name of your box inside. And this is exactly the same name which we have used before for opening our box. And then you call here this close method to actually close this box. Alright, now we have learned how we can open a box and also how we can close a box. And now we can use our crude operations, create, read, update and delete to actually access our storage. Therefore I have created here already a UI on the right side and this is this transactions page. And basically if we click here on this add button a dialog will show up and here we can then put the name, amount and also the type of the transaction inside. And then if we click here on add then he is going inside of this method add transaction and now we want to simply store all of these inside of our local storage. Therefore I have created here a new transaction object and then I fill here simply all the fields with the right data. And therefore I simply access here each of the different fields and put the right data inside. And now we want to store this transaction object within our box. So here I had before a local variant inside where it was then simply adding it to a list of transactions. And now we can basically get here our transaction box first of all. And therefore I create here a new class boxes. And inside of this class we can then create this get transactions method which returns in a box of this transaction type. And here we call then hive box to access our box and here you put then the name of your transaction inside. And this needs to be the same name which we have also used before here within our main file to open our box. And now we go back to our add transaction method and here on our box we simply call the method add and put our transaction inside. So within the add method you can only put a value inside and the key is then automatically generated for you. If you also want to control the key which you put here inside you can then instead use the method put and then you define here your key and secondly you put your value inside. And now we can try it out so I put here some data inside and then I click on add and this will put then our transaction inside of our local storage. Next we also want to display it in our UI and therefore I go here all the way up to this method build content and here before I used a transactions list where I have put then all the transactions locally inside and I want to simply replace it here. So we simply wrap here our build content method inside of this value builder 
And here inside we listen then to our box, therefore I access here this transaction box from our method which we have created before. And on your box you call listenable to get here every time the changes, so if anything in your box changes, then we get here in our builder the new box. And then make sure that you put here next to the Hive importment statement also the Hive flutter importment statement inside. And then this error of this listenable will also go away. Within this builder method we can then access over our box all the values which are stored within our box. And you transfer it then to a list. And really important is always also to cast it to the right type because here our box only holds transactions and therefore you also need to convert it to a transaction. And now I can go here up and I can remove here this list in our state transactions which I have used before to store our transactions because right now we simply load our transactions from our box instead. And with this you can hot reload your app and then you should see that the spread is inside because we have loaded it from our box and it is also persisted in our local storage. Let's also go back to our add transaction method and here every time if you put an object inside make sure that this object which you put here inside is registered. And therefore we did before all of these different steps. We put it here to hive type. We also have generated this transaction adapter. And lastly we have registered our transaction adapter and opened this box. And these are also really important steps because if you don't do them then you cannot access your box. And also if you miss to register your transaction adapter then you cannot put a transaction later inside of your box. So by default you can put here primitive data types inside which are supported from Dart such as boolean, integer and so on. You also can put here lists inside and maps inside and JSON inside and daytime objects. For all of these you don't need to register anything because these work out of the box. However if you create your own object then you need to register it before. Sometimes you also want to read your boxes again and before we looked at how we can read it within our UI. However sometimes you also want to access it outside of the UI and therefore you can get first of all your transaction box and on the box you can then call the method get and inside of it you will pass then the key which you have put inside before when you used here this put method. And with this you can also read then the transaction which you have before put here inside. Next to it you can also always access all the values of your box by calling here values or you can also access all the keys by calling here keys. Within our UI we can also click on one item and then we can click on edit. And here we basically can change our item and then click on save. And if we click here on save then we are going here inside of this edit transaction method. And before I have done here everything locally so I simply changed here the object locally. However now we need to do it again over our box. Therefore we can delete here the set state first of all. However this can stay inside because we still modify here then our transaction object. And then you can simply call here transaction save and this will then persist your object in the local database. And you can use the save method only if you have put it here inside of your model object. So you need to extend here this hive object. If you do this then you have access here also to the save method. Alternatively if you don't want to use this then you can also get here first of all your transaction box and then you can simply call here box put and then you need to put here the key inside of your transaction object which you want to save. So maybe you need to store then the key inside of your transaction object so you can replace it for example like this. Here you access then the key and then you put here your transaction inside. To make this work you obviously need to create then a key within your transaction object. And now if I click here on save you will see that he has put the new value here inside. And next to it we also have here this button delete and if we click on this then we want to delete our item. And this is pretty simple so we can simply call here transaction delete and again this method is only working if you also put here this extends hive object within your model class inside. And again like before if you don't want to use this convenient method then you can also get your transaction box and then you can call here box delete and inside of it you pass then the key inside and this key you need to store then again within your transaction object. And this is then basically doing the same thing as this method. 
And now let's also try it out. So I click here on delete and you will see that he has deleted this item. And three more important things to notice about Hive. You can also store encrypted boxes and therefore simply check out the documentation how you can also encrypt your box. Secondly, Hive doesn't have a query language. So if you rely on complex data relations or if you want to use queries, then prefer to use SQF Lite, which uses SQL. And I will put a link in the description of a video about SQF Lite. And lastly, it is really important to notice here that your model classes fields should never change the number. So you should never change here the number in production. Also, if you later remove here then one field, then you should never use here the same number which you have used before. So for example, if you used before five, then not use the same number here within another type. Also, you cannot change here the type of your field if you have used your app already in production. And if you want to do this, then you need to change here the number. So use a number which you have never used before. And then you also can change the type of your field. However, never use the same number which you have used before for the other different type you used. And by the way, if you want to get here this whole source code of this application, then you can get it with the first link in the description. And with the second link, you can get access to my Flutter courses, where I teach you how you can become a better and more efficient developer.